Finally, a gluten-free bread that actually tastes really good. It's also super versatile and free from oils, corn, yeast, and xylem husk. I have been experimenting with bread recipes for a long time now, so I'm so glad I finally figured this one out. It tastes amazing, so let's get started. First up, we have chana flour. So this is basically just super fine garbanzo bean flour. I usually get mine from the Indian store in a large bag because I make this often now. You're gonna start with three cups of that and then three fourths cup of brown rice flour. Then we are gonna use three tablespoons of almond flour. It doesn't have to be blanched, but if it's not, it may alter the color of the bread. Then we have three fourths of a tablespoon of sea salt one and a half tablespoons of baking powder. And next up, you're gonna use three tablespoons of coconut flour. And lastly, we have three tablespoons of tapioca starch. Next with the spices, these are optional. I do one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, and I absolutely love thyme, so I added probably about a half a teaspoon of this, but you don't have to use it if you don't like. And then next up, I added some ground pepper as well as a few sprinkles of some oregano. These Italian spices really give it that Italian kind of style bread. And then you are gonna get yourself a whisk and blend all of these ingredients together. Make sure there are no lumps. And while I'm stirring here, I'll just give you guys a little background about this recipe. It's really easy. You're literally getting a bunch of ingredients and dumping it in a bowl kind of like a cake and you're just mixing. There is no setting with the yeast and every ingredient that I use has a purpose. Next up, you are gonna need six cups of sparkling water. I use San Pellegrino and what this does is creates the bubbles in the bread like it would if there were yeast in it. Although you see me switch to a wooden spoon here, I would consider actually just using the whisk. It doesn't disturb the bubbles in the bread, which I thought that it would, but after making it many times with experimenting and whatnot, it actually doesn't. So from here, you're going to continue mixing until all of the lumps are completely out. So let's talk about some tips while we're mixing here. Depending on if you want to make bread for sandwiches, dipping, thinner flatbread, or burgers, the time frame of how long these take to cook will be different. My favorite thing to make has been sandwiches, so we are gonna use a large pan for this one. So you're gonna wanna pour the batter into a pan, try and make sure there are no clumps. And then what I did was I actually let the batter sit for about 10 minutes. I noticed a difference when I did this, so I would suggest trying that. The texture and consistency of the bread when it was all done and baked came out way better this way, so that's why I'm suggesting it. And here is me just getting out the last few little clumps. That's why I suggest using the whisk. And then next up, I'm just gonna add some spices to the top. So this was some thyme. And then I also put some smoked paprika. It gives it like a beautiful color and like a smoky kind of smell when it's baking. I also put a little bit of oregano as well. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven for 45 minutes. And then at the 35 minute mark, I like to check it with a toothpick just to make sure that it's cooking properly. The crust at the top will start to crack like this so you'll know it's almost done. Mine needed that extra 10 minutes to make it a total of 45. As soon as I take it out of the oven, I turn it upside down on a cooling rack and then I took off the parchment paper and let it cool down. It is really, really important to let this cool down completely before you cut into it. Otherwise, it will not cut properly and it's just so much harder to handle. So I usually make my bread early on in the day this way and has enough time to cool down on its own and I'm not rushed trying to make it cool down. From here, you really can cut it however you like. I'm just making sandwich cuts. Look at how amazing this bread looks. I was able to cut these into four perfect rectangles to make sandwiches. I will say these are very big, so once you cut them into rectangles, you can also cut them in half. Each half roughly is about one four by five sandwich. And then you can cut these even thinner if you're trying to do something like a focaccia bread, which would be great for dipping or just plain by itself, whichever works for you. I even like it with just a little bit of the garlic sauce that I showed you guys how to make. And here we have it all sliced up into the four long pieces. And then when you turn it around, it has this beautiful color in the crust and on the inside, nice and soft and even a little spongy. And then we are going to slice this in half I like to slice them in half so that I can make either toast out of them or toast the sandwich bread as well. You wanna make sure that you have a steady hand with this if you're gonna cut it at this angle. Otherwise, you may have two very uneven slices. I've been doing this for a while, so I'd say I'm pretty good at it, but once in a while, even for me, I sometimes mess up once in a while. 
And usually from here, I'm ready to toast it. So my personal favorite is to put them in the broiler and let them toast that way. But this is also another way too if you like the grill marks. For that, I just used a cast iron pan that had grill marks. Here I'm gonna show you how I do it on the broiler. I just cut the sandwich in half and then I put the broiler on high. You gotta make sure you really pay attention to it so that it doesn't burn. And then I put it in a small pan and then I let it toast under the broiler just for a few minutes, maybe like three to five max. As I like my bread to be toasted just a tad, but still soft in the middle. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Stay tuned if you'd like to watch me make a quick little sandwich. It was one of the first ones I made when I was making this bread. And I also have a little mukbang at the end, which I'm going to start doing more of, just so you guys can actually see me eating the food and tasting it and just chatting about whatever. This sandwich has some microgreens, tomatoes, a garlic sauce, some pesto, this cheese that I made and then I just put it together and I cut it in half. This just really shows you how easy some of these sandwiches can be and let me tell you they do not disappoint. As you can see here these are all these different types of sandwiches that I've made coming up. I've tried different ones with roasted bell peppers, with sprouts, I've made burgers, I've done onion rings and then I've tried different cheeses and different cabbage slaws. The options are just endless. I just can't wait until you guys make them and put on your own little variations because believe me, I have missed eating a good sandwich in probably about seven years since I went vegan. And even the burgers, a lot of the buns on the burgers are horrible. So this was a huge game changer for me and a staple in my house. I even bought some molds to make burger buns and put some sesame seeds on the top and look how they came out amazing. Even a vegan chopped cheese, I made that too. But anyways, stay tuned for the mukbang if you're into that. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back. So I got this sandwich here with the bread just so I can kind of show you guys how good this is um, live in the flesh. I got this idea because I used to go to SF State and they had these bagels that were so good. This is when I wasn't vegan and they had this uh, bagel that had pesto, feta, tomatoes, and sprouts. It was so good, you guys. And so this basically reminds me of that. But obviously, like, I don't eat feta cheese, so I have a garlic sauce in here. I guess I should tell you guys what I have in here. It's sprouts, tomatoes, the garlic sauce that I showed you guys how to make, and a little bit of guacamole. This is it here. Super simple, but so much flavor in this bread. I toasted it just a little bit, but it's really soft still. So we're gonna eat and kind of talk. Yeah, let's get into it. Mm. And it's so juicy. I toasted the the bread just a little bit, but like kept it soft enough to where it's like sandwich like. Mm. And then also put some rosemary on top of the bread. Like it has this like Italian kind of taste as well. So good. It's so juicy that it's dripping out. I also did put some lemon juice on top of the sprouts mm. and making it extra juicy and has a little tang to it. But what I really like about this bread is you can use it for burgers. It kind of reminds me of like a focaccia too when it first comes out of the oven. Like you can totally use it as like a dip bread to dip it in. Oh. <sighs> but you can use it as one of those like dip breads. You can slice it real thin and make it into like a really, really flat bread if you want. Like instead of just splitting it. Once you can split it into like fours and kind of like make it spread. I still got another half left. The sprouts in it bring out like this freshness, but 
I love this flatbread because it actually like holds together. A lot of the other flatbreads that I've tried to make from other people, they would like fall apart or they didn't have that softness. So they were either like too hard or so soft that they fell apart. Here's the second half. And the juiciness of the tomato, this is so underrated y'all. Especially when you have like an heirloom tomato. Oh my gosh. So refreshing. And a little salt and pepper on the um, tomatoes. Mm -mm -mm. You guys have to make this. I do have the burger recipe coming up too. I've been editing so many videos for you guys. <clears throat> and writing down a bunch of recipes so that I can share them all with you too. And if you wanna know how to make the sprouts, cause I made these at home, as well as the, um, the garlic sauce, it's on my page, so make sure you check that out as well. This way you have everything you need to make this. I use the last piece of the bread to soak up all the drippings. Last bite. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, it always happens. My big old bottom lip. <laughs>